So you guys know that in a couple of weeks, I am going to Central Asia where, I don't know if you got my message today, Heather, they still have not booked the venue. You guys, we have an event for two and a half days with 40 people. They still have not booked the place that we are going. Anyway, I'm still trying to figure out all the details. And usually I have this written out plan for our calls. And I mean, I know the format we're using, but like, I literally have not had a minute to like write it. So I'm doing this Central Asian style. We're just going to go with what flows, but it's going to be good. So I don't know about you guys, but yeah, God is doing a lot of stuff lately, personally and business stuff. And it's been good to partner with him. So thank you for being here. Several of you I've actually seen twice today. Um, so that's saying something. If you want to come back and get a little bit more um, of all of this, that's that's a good thing, especially for those of you who are not just sitting around your house and are traveling and doing different things and stuff like that. So it's good to see you. Um, okay. I want to start off with a passage that the Lord brought in our conversation yesterday at church around, um, I've got to read this. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I could see the beginning of what you said, Suzanne, but I couldn't see the end to go see the chosen again. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Thank you. I'm honored that you chose us, but the chosen is a good thing too. Um, it just really ties into this, this series we're doing on lesser things. So I trust that you guys have been challenged as I have been, as I'm doing it, um, the series on the lesser things that we give our time to, and there's been a lot of hard stuff in there. So don't feel like you have to address everything at once, but this passage so beautifully describes the process of how lesser things become too big in our lives. So let me just uh, take you through this. This is from first King or second King, sorry, second Kings 17. And the title of the section says exile because of idolatry, right? Okay. It says, and this occurred because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord who brought them out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, King of Egypt, and had feared other gods and walked in the customs of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel and in the customs that the kings of Israel have practiced. And the people of Israel did secretly against the Lord their God things that were not right. They built for themselves high places in all their towns, from watchtower to fortified city. They set up for themselves pillars and ashram on every high hill and under every green tree. And there they made offerings on all the high places as the nations did, whom the Lord carried away before them. And they did wicked things, provoking the Lord to anger. And they served idols, of which the Lord said to them, hang on, I'm going to let Danielle in. You shall not do this. Yet the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes in according with all the law that I command your fathers and that I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. But they would not listen, in verse 14, but were stubborn as their fathers had been who did not believe in the Lord their God. They despised his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and the warnings that he gave them. They went after false idols and became false themselves. And they followed the nations that were around them concerning whom the Lord had commanded them that they should not do like them. Had a party going. And they abandoned all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves metal images of two calves. And they made an Asherah and worshiped all the host of heaven and served Baal. And they burned their sons and daughters as offerings and used divination and omens and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left for the tribe of Judah. And then it goes on to basically say, and Judah did the same thing that Israel did. Now, why did I read this to you? Because this is kind of like, wow, Lisa, that was really encouraging. Except if you listen, I'm going to challenge you to go back and read that. So that was 2 Kings 17, starting in verse seven going down through 23 is that whole section there was a progression in their idolatry there was a progression in the lesser things did you hear some of the things let me open this up so it's not just me talking um did you hear some of the things that happened that took their hearts away from the lord and started turning them towards other things i remember first I didn't do that <laughs> sorry First, they despised his laws. Okay. Then all of a sudden, they're they're praying to all these other gods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Lorena? I, I was just saying sacrificing your children would certainly, you know. <laughs> Could you imagine there. getting to the point of sacrificing your children and thinking that's okay? Ooh, no. I, Notice I, that was near the end, but 
Did you also notice at first they secretly did stuff? It was secret, right? And then it became very public. Like I'm putting up stuff in my front yard. So everybody and his brother knows that I'm worshiping this other God and not the one true God. And it was like, they kept turning their eyes away from him. Where did they look? They looked at these other nations and then they started following them, right? And that's exactly the progression that idolatry takes. Now, here's the thing. They had these really obvious, I have a golden calf in my front yard. I have a, you know, a pole. I have a, whatever these other, you know, like, uh, places where they were sacrificing to these other gods. We are a little more discreet. We have these idols that we can like stick in our pocket or we can spiritualize like, yeah, I'm busy, but it's for Jesus. Or I'm, you know, like I'm being self-reliant and self-sufficient because, you know, this is me doing hard things or, you know, or whatever, whatever it is, whichever one has stood out to you. And yet, if we are looking to those things to find our value, to find our purpose, to find our meaning, to find our um, you know, significance to find our hope, our peace, our joy, or anything, they ultimately are idols. And they ultimately are lesser things that are robbing us of our time, of our attention, and of our affection. And yeah, it becomes more and more. It's just like sin, right? Like you read that progression in James where it's like, first it's just, you know, you see something and then it's a desire and then you actually take action on it and then you're excusing it and then you don't care who knows. Right. So like if there's one of these over the past couple of weeks and I you're welcome to if you want to share in the chat or if you want to unmute and say, hey, this is one so far that's really stood out to me. Uh, again, I know that's being vulnerable, but hopefully all of us could raise our hand in a lot of them. I want you to kind of look at, yeah, how am I turning my eyes out now? Hopefully we're not getting to the point of sacrificing our children. You know, <laughs> you know, hopefully like Satan knows, though, he has to keep it subtle because we're smart. So if he makes it look too out of, you know, way away from God, he's not going to, you know, get us to start moving in that direction. But yeah, it's, it's super slight. So yeah, I'd love to hear if there's one that has stood out to you. So what have we covered so far? I don't have my list in front of me. I should hang on a second. I can pull it up because I'm organized. Here it is. Okay. We have talked about idols, like in general, we've talked about busyness, comfort and control, self-sufficiency, What's the date today? Today's the 26th. Tomorrow is people pleasing. And then on Thursday this week is our work. So kind of of them, is there something that's, yeah, approval of man that falls under the people pleasing for sure. So we're going to have that tomorrow comfort and control, a gut punch. Sorry for that. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I'm getting gut punched here too. This is going to go all the way through March. So just so you know, like, you know, because I really felt like during this Lent season, right? What are the lesser things that we are giving our time to and uh, people pleasing as well? Yeah, that's a huge one, right? And even I think like we hear this like message of like be self-sufficient and, you know, do hard things and whatever. And that just as much can be, you know, it could, can be an idol. So be engaging in the community because hopefully that's a place where you're going to not only find you're not alone, um, but also where I'm really going to encourage you to name something. If you noticed, my questions have all been pretty similar. I give you reflection questions in the episode, but then my question in the community is like, what's the one thing that you are going to do or that, you know, whatever, because I want us to come down to, okay, I just want to take one step at a time and start moving away from this thing and start putting my eyes back on the Lord. I mean, I can't even tell you how cool the one was I recorded today that won't even come out to like the middle of March, but there's some really powerful stuff coming. So keep listening, keep sharing. Speaking of which, I have my avocado bag from the ladies in Afghanistan, uh, or not Afghanistan, uh, Tajikistan is actually the country that I'm going to. Um, and so excited about that opportunity. So if you have not left a review yet, please do that because for every review left between now and when I leave in the middle of March, I'm adding to the contribution that I'm taking over. If you've already left a review, then you can do what like Lorena did. She shared the podcast with a friend. She screenshotted it and shared it in the community. So it helps other people find us and it helps me know like what is it that's that's helping you um, in this process as well. So be praying uh, just for our connection when we're there. It looks like timing is going to work out, even though, again, they don't make like hard and fast plans ahead of time. So I'm just trusting that it's all going to happen and God's going to take care of the details for us to travel out to where these ladies are and get some good pictures. My branding photographer is actually on our team, so she's coming with me. And so we were talking yesterday at, at church about beauty. And uh, well, that is actually one of the, the episodes I recorded today. How interesting. God gave me this lesson yesterday, the day before I had to record a podcast on the very same topic. I'm like, okay, Lord, I need to learn something else before we talked about this. But 
we talked about the beauty there. And so I want to really capture the beauty of the women there and stuff as well. And one of our CEOs has graciously raised her hand to help build a website to sell these bags. So that's a huge answer to prayer. And I don't know how many I'm coming back with, but we'll get them up on that website. And then of course, can use your help in being able to share that out to people. And I want them, these really to be like a prayer reminder, you know, like every time you put your Bible in the bag or throw your wallet in and throw your lunch in or whatever, like take a minute to pray for, you know, these women across the world. Um, most of them don't know Jesus yet. They just think he's a great prophet, uh, but they don't know him as savior and Lord. And so that's ultimately what we want to help them do, you know, uh, in all of that. So yeah, so that's what's happening and that's exciting. So I will be in and out a little bit in the month of March. So things will still keep going on uh, for the most part as planned. Um, although there will be a little adjustment to our next community call because that's the day that I'm flying home. It's a 12 hour flight home. Uh, well, that's that's the second leg of the trip. There's a five hour flight and then a 12 hour flight. So I will be somewhere in the air at this time on the last Monday of the month. So I will be posting in our community when that's gonna be. So that way, in fact, I think I'll just tell you guys now, it's going to be that Tuesday right after Easter. Um, so Easter is the 31st. And that Monday, I figure some people are traveling with just, you know, having Easter Monday off. A lot of people do. So we're going to make it that Tuesday. I think it's the 2nd um, of April. So I will make sure it should be already corrected inside the community. And I will double check that it is. So that's kind of what's coming up. And thanks for, yeah, your patience and stuff and all of that. And we've got a CEO workshop that's coming up the first full week of, well, I guess it wouldn't be the first full week, the second week of April. So my community support gal should be putting those events up and you are welcome to register. There is a free early bird guide that I'm putting out right now to help you start thinking about the things that we'll be talking about. It's a three-day workshop series this time. So yeah, be praying for that and thinking about who you can invite to that as well. I actually created a form for you to invite a friend and make it really easy. Um, so uh, I'm trying to put together some, some good things in the back end to make it really super good for all of us. So that's, what's happening coming forward, but we are here to look at the month of March in your life and kind of get this bigger picture of what this looks like. So let me drop in the chat, um, a link to the planning with God document that we are going to be walking through. So if you have a printed copy, even better, if you're one of the girls who puts stuff on your iPad, that works too. Or if you just have a plain old sheet of paper, you can just work through this with a plain old sheet of paper and you'll, you know, we'll just walk through what this looks like. So, um, I just want to say this first, cause I was thinking about this this morning. We are about to come into the month of March. I don't know about anybody else, but I had a lot of excitement in January, February went by really fast. And now it's like, Ooh, how do I keep going to make sure I hit what I said I wanted to do by the end of first quarter, which is March. And it's really easy to feel like you're behind. I just want to tell you right now, you are not behind and you have time. Okay. You are right where you are, right where you're supposed to be. Maybe it was because of your choice and maybe it wasn't. And that's okay. Either way, it's not going to serve you to say oh, I'm behind. Right. So we're just going to get that one right off the table and say, I'm here right now. What do you have for me looking forward, Lord? Okay. So the first thing we do is we are doing a pause. And so it's literally going to be a minute. When was the last time you just literally sat for an entire minute? I might even give you two minutes. Woohoo. And like, didn't have to think or say or do anything other than just be quiet. Right. And I've got a spot there. So if, if, if you feel like, yeah, the Lord is saying something to you in this, in this time that you need to hear, write it down. If you don't hear anything, that's okay. It's not like you have to hear some audible voice or some like life-shaping thing. Maybe you just need to be quiet and just learn to be still. Okay. So two minutes, we're going to take our say la pause. I need to quiet my mind down from me running around and, uh, and then we'll be able to go into the next steps. Okay.
Okay, we've got about 30 seconds. Okay, hopefully that felt good <laughs> to just be still. We need that, right? Um, okay, our second one is position. And here's where I want you to write down your current word. Now, this could be your word for the year. This could have been your word for the month of February. It could be the word that you feel like the Lord is laying in your heart for March. There's no right or wrong. It could be a phrase. Maybe it's not one word. Maybe it's a couple words together. Like, what is that anchor place that you keep coming back to? We talk about having something that we can keep checking in on. How 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 is this aligning in this way? So writing that word out because it's like we got to get that word in front of us again. We forget. We get excited when we said it, and then we sometimes forget. So what is your word right now? And then scale of one to ten, how aligned do you feel like you are with that word right now? And this is not in a judgment way. This is just between you and the Lord, and you just knowing, you know, like. Where, where am I in relation to this? You may be super far away. Don't let that discourage you. Say, okay, Lord, I'm not on zero. So how have I grown and how do you want me to grow? Or you may be like, really like, wow, I feel like this area or this, you know, this is really coming true of me. How do I maintain this? Right. But I want you to, you know, kind of evaluate on a scale of one to 10 and think about why, right? What is it that is either moving you in that direction or moving you away from it? Maybe there's specific things. Maybe it's more, a bigger picture thing, but what's your word? Scale of one to 10, how aligned are you? And why are you saying that? Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. I'll give you probably like a minute and a half or so on that one. And if you don't have a word, you haven't thought of one at all up till now, guess what? That'll be your first assignment. What is it that the, that is kind of what that guiding word you want to be for you? Raise your hand if you want more time on this one. No? Feel like you kind of got it? Okay, I'm gonna hit stop the timer at a minute and a half then. Okay, the next P. Notice, did you notice these are all P's? They're all alliterate. I like alliteration, helps me remember things. Patterns. I want you to notice, okay, kind of thinking back over the past month or so, maybe just the past week, maybe the past day, maybe that's as far back as you can remember. That's okay. I want you to notice your habits. What are the things you've been doing on repeat? Because habits are things that we start doing on repeat. Sometimes they're taking us in the direction of where we want to go. And sometimes they're not very, most likely they're not neutral. They're usually going one direction or the other. So I want you to see if you come up with one under each category. You may have more than one for some categories. Um, what is a pattern that you want to commence? That's a fancy name for start because I had to make it start with a C to, to fit this alliteration. You know, we got we to gotta make things fun. What is one that you want to continue? So one you want to start, you're not doing right now. One you want to keep doing because this is moving you in a, health, in a good direction. This could be in any area of your life or business, just kind of noticing. And one you want to cease, like, eh, no more of this. This is not serving me, helping me, redeeming my time in any way. I'm just going to give you permission right now to say, ixnay. 
Okay, so I want you to notice some patterns and habits. What's been going on lately? What's one you want to commence, one you want to continue, one you want to cease? It's really helpful for me, at least looking back at what I said last month too, to see what things I was saying and then I can evaluate. Yeah, did I do those, not do those? About 30 ish seconds. And again, if you don't finish a section, it's okay. You still got this. You can go back to it anytime. Oops, I might have accidentally turned off the one that I had. Oh, no, I didn't. 14 seconds. I hope that this is a helpful process as we're kind of taking a bigger picture look at things, you know, instead of just getting right nitty gritty into your calendar, like we're kind of looking at bigger picture things. Um, and that's my goal is we start with the heart and some of the bigger picture vision things, and then we kind of can start getting more specific. So the next P is prioritize. And here is where we're identifying what matters and those habits or rhythms that you do want to practice. Now, there are eight, all eight areas are listed there. I want to give you permission to not fill in all eight areas. Okay. Don't feel like just because there's a blank, you have to put something in it. And, you know, I have, that's me being a good student. Okay. Because you being a good student is you writing something down and following through. I would rather you write one priority in one of these areas than write eight of them and do none of them. Okay. So I want you to think through, I'm going to give us about four minutes ish on this one. I'll kind of check in about three minutes, see how we're doing. Like what, what are the areas that need some attention right now? Is it your faith walk? Is it your family, which could involve a spouse relationship, it could involve kid relationships, in-laws, parents, extended family, kind of you decide what that, what that means. Friendships, how much attention are they getting right now? Your service, which is going to be your work, your business, your ministry, whatever fits under that category, your stewardship, which is mostly going to be finances, but not always could also be, you know, just possessions and resources and things like that, that you have, how are you stewarding it? Your wellness, what, what maybe needs some attention, sleep, Food, water, exercise, passions. Are you doing the get twos? Where are my CEO girls? This is our conversation the other day. Sabbath is for the get twos, not the have twos. This is this is life shaping, you guys. Am I doing get twos? I'm gonna kind of give you a little something. I, I God showed me something when we we're on that book club discussion. I'm not sure where it's gonna fit on here, so I'm, I'll ask you guys at the end where we could put it in. But yeah, and what am I doing that is growing? my interests, my fun, my smiling, my laughing, my enjoying life and not always doing, and then our dwelling. Are there some things, are there some systems, are there some spaces, are there some things in your home right now that are falling apart or are really just causing a lot of stress and, you know, a little angst going on, then maybe that's an area to address this month. Okay. So next few minutes, you don't have to fill in all eight, but I wanted to put all eight in front of you so you can be thinking about what needs your attention in this next month, okay? And I want you to get specific in there, okay? We talk inside the program about sticky goals. They're specific, they're time-based, they're important, they're challenging, and they are kingdom-focused. Because if we just say, I'm gonna get healthier, guess what, girl, it's not gonna happen because that's way too general. So if it's, I'm gonna get to bed by nine, 
so that I can be asleep by 10 and get up at six and get X number of how many hours of sleep that is, then put that. If it's, I'm going to, you know, walk for 20 minutes a day. If it's, I'm going to drink 60 ounces of water, like the more specific you can be on whatever you write in the section, the more effective it's going to be. And this may kind of pull over from the one before about the patterns that you want to commence or continue. It's okay if those things, you know, now go in, in one of these categories. Okay, that's about two minutes. Raise your hand if you want more time in this section. It's okay. <laughs> I'm trying to kind of gauge what you guys need. So yes, hands, no, no, yes, no, no, no hands going up. Okay, all right. And remember, things may not always come to you when you're sitting in front of a piece of paper with something in hand. So it's okay if things come to you later and you're like, you know what, this is really what I wanna put on there. Like hopefully this is just stirring the process that's going on inside of you, okay? Our next P is plan. Here's where it's really important, again, to check in with the current plans that we have. For those of you who have a 12-week plan, depending on when you started it, this could be coming up on the last month of your first 12-week like you know, rotation. So checking in, what is the monthly milestone that I've set that I want to hit this month in order to hit this, you know, this, this goal or to complete this project by the end of this 12-week period? And then even looking now, now break it down even more. So get like, okay, what's my monthly milestone? What are my weekly targets? So week one of, of March, where do I want to be? Week two of March, week three of March, week four of March, where do I want to be? So that doesn't get to like the last couple of days and I'm a crazy lady trying to like, you know, get it all done, right? We're trying to pace ourselves. And then are there specific daily tasks that you want to identify? That may come more when you do your seven day planning each week and you're getting more specific nitty gritty into each week. But maybe there are some things you're like, I know this is going to have to go on, on one of those lists. And so you can just at least kind of brain dump it right now. If you don't currently have a 12 week plan, A, you should, and let's get you with a 12 week plan. B, it's okay. Where would you like to be by the end of March? It could be in any of those eight areas we just talked about. So maybe it's related to your business, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's a health thing you're working on. Maybe it's a relationship you're working on. Maybe it's something in your home you're working on. Like I got a bunch of stuff posted on Poshmark because it was sitting in my chair over here for like the past two weeks. And so that was what I worked on, you know, this weekend was getting all that stuff uploaded and now it's there. And if it sells great, at least it's not sitting in my closet. So, you know, maybe it's something like that, that you know, is just going to free up time and space, you know, for you. So if you don't have one already decide now what it is you want to do. And maybe you just say, I'm just going to do this for the month. And then, you know, and then maybe you revisit a uh, 12 week plan. 12 week plans do not have to coincide with the quarters of the year. I just want to give you permission. Okay. So if you decide on February 26, I'm today is day one of my 12 week plan. Good for you. Your 12 weeks ends whenever your 12 weeks is up. Okay. So don't feel like you have to go along with the quarters of a year and be like, well, I missed most of first quarter. So what's the point? I'll wait till second quarter. No, start today. Okay. And if you are checking your plan and you're like, shoot, 
I kind of like dropped the ball in February. Like I'm nowhere near where I thought I was going to be or where I think I should be or whatever. You're going to, first of all, let go of that story because it's not going to help you and just go, where am I right now? And where do I want to be by the end of this month? Okay. So what are you currently working towards? And we break our time down to 12 week chunks. It's amazing how things don't get put off and they also don't stretch out for way too long and take more time than you want it to. Kind of creates this healthy sense of urgency. So I'm gonna set four minutes for that. I'll check in after a couple minutes, see where we're at. If you don't have a written plan, get it in writing. There's something about being able to like see it mapped out that helps your brain know what it's working towards. Thumbs up or hand up one more time. You guys are all like super fast. Okay, Lorraine is like, yes. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay. I'd be curious to hear if anyone's willing to unmute and share real quick. What are you working towards right now? Like, what are you making 12 week plans around for those of you who have them? They inspire those who don't yet to think about what kinds of things could be a 12 week plan. Anybody want to share? Let me turn off my alarm before it rings on us. There we go. I realized my first 12 week plan was more realistic like a 12 month plan. <laughs> okay. Yep. Sometimes that happens. We have great aspirations and we realize, okay, life doesn't quite line up with that. Right. And right. yeah, here's the thing. The philosophy of the 12 week year is that each week kind of becomes like a month. Right. But again, it's not like, yeah, it's not like I, you have to know how much I'm cramming in or whatever, but 
think about, you know, typically what happens if you give yourself a year, you're going to have a lot of ebb and flow. I'm doing something I'm not, I'm doing something I'm not. Whereas if I can just stay consistent, could I get it done in 12 weeks? Or maybe for you, it's a six month, you know, plan. Maybe it's two 12 week plans or something like that. But yeah, going back and revisiting it is very helpful. And what are and you doing at base ground right now? I'm sorry. What's your project or your focus for that? Well, first I realized I need to pick two, no more than two shiny things, okay, <laughs> to go after. This is true. <laughs> one, I usually say one, one and I say maybe two. If you're pinky promise, you're not going to like fall off the wagon. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Instead of my whole bucket list for the rest of my life. So um, my my goals to be completed this year is I'm doing a complete conversion of, of my website and tying it in with a podcast I'm beginning, the a Texas Girl Talks podcast. Um, so that's my, my number one with, you know, all the things that go into making that. And then also um, to get a definitive foundation for the ministry that I am wanting to start where I produce the audio prompts mm. for uh, people in the belief bo belief bondage breakthrough. Um, and working with Celebrate Recovery has been amazing mm. for, uh, you know, just hearing, hearing people's stories and testimonies and um, seeing the patterns of belief, you know, that they become caught up in. So, uh, I have a more definitive structure around the first one, which ties back into my voiceover. And the other one, I'm I'm sort of groping through it and, and praying for guidance. Yeah, yeah. I know we have a call this week, so we'll work on that a little bit too. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else want to share what your 12-week project is focused on? What are you working on? Go ahead, Jill. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of like the second half of my previous, like, business 12 week plan and that's kind of in motion so I feel like I can maybe focus on a different area of you know life and and so um actually I'm gonna call Janelle out on this since she's on the call with me she and I sat down this week and set up our own like in like we have some 12 week like health goals that we're gonna work through together and she's in Arizona I'm in California so we are setting up a girls weekend away and we're going to meet outside of Las Vegas at a resort to, as our reward for, hey. for rocking that 12 week. We needed a, a good, big, shiny reward <laughs> to make it motivating. That's awesome. Um, and we miss each other. So um, it's, it'll be a good thing, but I'm also, I had a pretty big smack in my face this last week in realizing that in pursuing some things, there are like, husband relationship that felt like it got pushed on the back burner and um had a hard conversation looking in the mirrors and like I need a 12 week like relationship building plan with my husband um and so um and I'm actually going to draw him into that and we're going to set up some goals rather than it just be me and my agenda right. um and let it be something we partner with so I appreciate the encouragement that way well, thank you for being vulnerable in those areas. And yeah, it is something that so often we make plans around so many other things, but we don't often think about some of the things that we really say matter to us and the time and attention that they need to grow and not just be maintained and things like that. So, and there's another one set a great reward at the end of that too, with him, you know, like what, what you guys want to do together to celebrate. And I'm pretty sure Heather, you live in Phoenix or in, outside of uh, Vegas, right? So you could give them some ideas of places to stay. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I love that. So if you haven't done a 12 week planning uh, thing with me, one of the things I have you do is to decide your reward before you start. And it doesn't mean you have to necessarily get to the finish line by the time you said, but you have to be working towards it during that 12 week time. And then yes, you get the reward, which I think is really fun. So I got all of my sketches done for the Redeemer Time Planner. And that was super exciting. And I'm on a pretty strict timeline to get this in the hands of a designer by April so that it can then get actually designed and then get to the printer and then get shipped to the US so you guys can have it in hand by October or November. So I'm like, okay, okay. And I'm doing a writing retreat for the next two days with my coach to kind of work on all the copy stuff. So that's the project that I'm working on right now. So 
Yeah, it's been fun. Okay, let's do preview because we're kind of cutting up our last 15 minutes. Here's where you're going to look ahead at the next month. We don't want any surprises. Okay, so if things are not in your calendar that should be, even regular reoccurring things, there's something about being able to see it and not like overlay something else over it and then realize, oh shoot, I haven't supposed to be in two places at one time or I forgot about this. Like, like get it on there, right? So here's how I personally use and teach um, planning and you can do whatever you want because you're the CEO. I use a digital calendar for like any like big stuff. So I can't get my husband to use a digital calendar. So that's out the window, but anytime I have to send something out to, you know, another person and they're going to book on my calendar, I make sure all my stuff is blocked off. So that way they can't, you know, type of things. So I use that for big picture planning. And then I use my printed planner each week, sitting down and doing the seven days. So it's helpful to make sure my monthly planner, and I actually do have a giant monthly calendar on my desk and that I find that that's where I keep a lot of stuff so I can visibly see it. And then when I do the seven day planning, then I've got, you know, all those things that I, I write in a little sticky note and then I transfer it into my planner. Cause I like to do my planner in my cozy quiet time spot. I don't know why, <laughs> but that's what I do. So anyway, this is kind of that bigger picture. What are the commitments I have coming up? What are their appointments, meetings, date nights, you know, my kids got a performance, we've got spring break, we've got, you know, whatever it is you're doing, what are personal events and projects that are coming up? Maybe you have a haircut, maybe you have your nails getting done. Maybe you're taking going to a retreat or taking a class or meeting your girlfriends or whatever. What are business events and projects coming up? Maybe you signed up for an alignable smart connect event, or maybe you are, um, you know, getting on something, um, that's going to help you with, you know, something that you're growing or a project you're working on. So it's just kind of helping you to think ahead about the things I'm going to make time for this month. Um, so that way it doesn't just kind of go, well, well, there went another month so much for that. Okay. So kind of looking ahead commitments, you already have said, I will be here at this day and this time. And then the events and projects that you want to make time for that may or may not be on a calendar yet. Okay, I've got about 20 more seconds on my timer and then we'll check in if you've got most of that stuff down. Hopefully, if we can anticipate what's coming up, we don't have surprises. Sometimes there are surprises that get thrown in or, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. But um, hopefully things are down in front of you. OK, this is the part that I wasn't sure where to put this in. If you've been around here a little while, we've been talking about the four Ds, which are delete, delegate, delay, and delight. And last week, when the CEOs and I were going through the book, The Rest of God, one of the ways they helped us um, like discern what things are Sabbathing and what things are not is that the Sabbathing things are the get tos, not the have tos, not the should dos, not the, you know, whatever, but like it's different from what we do the other six days of the week. And so immediately my brain went, that's the delight part we talk about, you know, that's, that's the delighting. And so 
I kind of went, can I make this happen? Can I make this pattern work for all of them? So here's what I came up with. Uh, and again, I'm trying to figure out where this fits in the system. So forgive me that I'm kind of throwing this in at the end because I'm not sure. But typically what you would do is you brain dump. And so maybe you would do this now and think about the whole month ahead, or maybe you do this on a weekly basis um, to kind of just brain dump what's in the next week that I need to make sure goes into my seven day planning. But the first step is to do a brain dump, right? What are all the things that are just in my head and on my calendar that I just need to put all in one place? And then you go through and you sort. And the delete are the should do's. They're the things that other people tell you you should do, but guess what? You don't have to, okay? If this is not this is not something that's going to really move you in the direction that God has you going, then you get to delete it, okay? So the deletes are the should do's. The delegates are the could do's, meaning you could do them, but guess what? So could someone else. I just got off a call right before we get on here about somebody who's hopefully going to like say yes to taking a piece of something that I could do and I've done for a long time, but I don't have the bandwidth anymore to give it the time and attention that it needs. And so I am happy to hand that off to someone else. Maybe it's a person. We talk about this all the time. Maybe it's your trading services. Maybe you're paying someone. Maybe it's uh, creating a system or getting a piece of technology or a software or something that's going to help delegate this could do. You could do it and keep doing it, but... Maybe there's someone else who could do it. Then the delays are the will do's. Like you're committed that you will do it, but just right now is not the right time. And that's okay. So you're going to decide where that's going to live. And then the delights are the get to's, right? What are the get to's that I'm plugging into my weeks? What are the get to's that I'm plugging into my month such that it is not all work and no play, right? We were challenged last week in their book club that, yeah, like there's something about when you play, when you get out in nature, when you aren't always producing and creating and you get out in creation, um, that is really life-giving. So do you have the get-tos somewhere on your list? So I don't know if the, if the four Ds is going to fit somewhere else inside this process. I'm open to feedback. If you guys are like, I love this, here's where I would recommend it, it live in the process of things, or if it's just going to be separate, something that I recommend people do uh, on their own um, or before they do like a seven day planning. Any thoughts just kind of off the cuff on like where, like, do you feel like this is something that should go in here that you would like that process for the whole month or something you would probably more use like on a weekly basis? Um, I'm open to input thoughts, ideas, things like that. Cause literally it's just like written at the top of my paper right now from when we were in book club last week. And I was like, oh, should do, could do, will do, get to. I love it. But now I got to figure out where to put it. <laughs> um, I just dropped in the chat. I feel like some of those D's could kind of fit in the preview section. And some of those can fit in the pace section. Because I think some of them, if they're delegated, I mean, I don't know, maybe all of them. But like, I kind of feel like some of them can help slow down the pace. Mm -hmm. If you realize you don't need to do them now or you don't need to do them at all. Mm. Um, and I don't know, maybe even the like plan section has some of the like get to part of it in there, the delight. I don't know. I feel like there's, there's enough of that theme that kind of fits in there that, and the, I personally think that they're, the, the D's can be a monthly thing, a weekly thing, sometimes even a daily thing. When I wake up and I've got, there's so much up here. I got to brain dump it all and figure out this is what I need to do now. And this is something that I'll, you know, all the things, but that's yeah. my personal feedback. Yeah. Thank you. And actually last month, sorry. Okay. This is my like afternoon elixir and there's cayenne pepper in here. <laughs> so when I took a drink, I was literally like my, my throat was on fire. I'm like, oh my gosh, dying here. It's still burning, but I'm gonna try and talk through it. Um, yes, last month we went through this process. I made a note at the top, the brain dump in the four Ds as like its own PDF. And I did put that inside our community, but I'm gonna go back and redo it and make and had these should do's, could do's, will do's, get to's. So maybe it'll just be uh, you know, something that you kind of then use um at wherever you you find it fits for you best. Because taking the time to do a brain dump is probably gonna take more time than we have just sitting right here together. So but thank you for that feedback. So it could go in places. It could go separate. Anybody else have any thoughts or feedback, especially if you've used the four Ds before, maybe you're like, I don't even know what the four Ds are. What are you talking about? Go in the community and look at least the PDF that was in there from last month. And I will make sure I go in and update uh, with this new little way of remembering them. It helps me just 
every day to do, you know, like Chesney was saying, uh, a daily one where I, I go in and I just take my lined sticky notes and I write down everything I know that needs to be done. And then I can go, okay, you know, that can happen Friday. That can happen, you know, next week. This has to happen today. Mm. And then it helps me. Then I can move on into the week. Mm. And, uh, but of all of those, delegate has been so huge for me to give myself permission to delegate. Mm. And um, just without constantly having, I, mine is mostly dwelling, just, you know, huge. You were talking about, is your house just falling down around your ears? My, mine's not doing that, but there were a lot of really big projects. And, um, and my husband and I just had a talk because he's one of these, I can do it. Why pay someone? He can do anything, but some things I've been waiting 10 years on. So he was like, okay, we, we have to. At some point I'm going to hire somebody here to come home and see it finished. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I actually, we did some stuff together Saturday and I have delegated and am paying a man to come and fix the bricks on our steps going out the back door before someone rolls an ankle. So okay. Yeah. okay. Yep. Sometimes we just got to do what needs to be done. Right. I love that application of it. And painting your swing on your porch. That's amazing. I'm so happy. I love it. I love it. Anybody else? Any thoughts on where the 40s go or how they work best for you? I think for me, the 40s would fall into after the brain dump. Um, kind of like what Lorena said, it's figuring out which of which goes to where. Um but I do like Shazni's idea about kind of incorporating them in between. Um, I don't know, maybe something to kind of like get them in there because some of the Ds would fall into the reflection side. Some of them are more of like a work thing um, and what needs to get done. So, but as for me, I think the those go along the lines of my brain dump so brain dump and then I'll have which one can I do now and delegate and all that stuff and hopefully I want to get you guys to the point where I mean there are some days you wake up and you're like yeah I had a plan but it's going to have to totally look different and I get those days right but we don't want to have that being the norm for the most part I would even say when you go to bed you should have an idea what tomorrow looks like and what those things are that are on there right and so my goal and what I personally do is I lay it out for the week. Yes, I do it in pencil and things sometimes get erased and moved and changed and stuff like that. But at least I have an, a flow for the week and I'm not just every day. It's like, I am kind of that way too about food. Like my friend used, I've told the story in the podcast. My friend used to think it was hilarious that she could come to my house in high school. She could find this like index card on our kitchen counter that would tell her what my family was going to have to eat for dinner every single day of the week. She thought that was hilarious because her mom never knew until like the hour before dinner, what was for dinner. Right. But it takes the decision out of the moment. It takes the emotion out of, I feel like this, I don't feel like this. And so bless my mom's heart. Like maybe that was her, you know, maybe it's her fault that I love planning things, but you know, at least for, you know, again, like what things I'm working on in my business or what things I'm doing, you know, in these different tasks that need to be done. I try to make as many of those decisions when I'm not in the moment. Now, do those things change sometimes because of the moment? Sometimes they do, but it is freeing to not wake up every day going, what am I doing today? And then bounce around like a ping pong ball with whatever happens to come your way. So that's what I'm trying to move us towards is we don't feel like that most days. Yes, we'll have random days to do that, but not for the most part. Okay, well, let's finish up with the, P, the last P, which is pace, right? And this is one of the things that I wrote down up in the pause was slow down and less is more, okay? So under pace, how am I going to decide to slow down? How will I slow the pace of my body, mind, and soul in this next month? So I want you to write one thing under body. I want you to write one thing under mind and write one thing under soul is your goal. Okay, how are you going to intentionally slow your pace in these three areas over the next month? What's that gonna look like? And then we'll pray over a month and go on.
Give me a thumbs up if you need more time. Okay. And at any moment, guess what? You can stop whatever you're doing. You can take a deep breath and just have that say la pause, right? Because sometimes we have great plans and it's easy to say it right here when it's just us, right? And my, I can hear my three dogs barking crazily outside. And I know my husband's working on a project and thankfully I put dinner in the crock pot. So that'll be ready and you know, whatever, but here's my commitment. I'm just posting the replay and then my computer is closed. I'm not working anything tonight, but yeah, pay attention to the pace of your mind, body, and soul because it matters. And that's how we stay uh, attentive to what God's doing. That's how we stay attentive to what's going on in here. It's really easy when we're so busy to just either brush past those emotional things that are coming up and noticing our reactions or our responses or our feelings and things like that, that are trying to say, Hey, there's something not working here. You know, it's like, if you ignore the check engine light on your car, event you'll, you'll keep going down the highway for a while, but eventually it's probably going to like come to a screeching halt. So it cost you a whole lot more time, money, energy, you know, relationships, stress, whatever to get it to where it needs to be and get it fixed. So we wanna pay attention to how we're feeling. And that's a, hopefully this community is a place where you feel like you're getting served and, and cared for and all of that. So yeah, come be part of what's going on, you know, inside the community. And this is a place where we can get value and we can give value. So you may be coming in one day because the Lord is just doing so much and you're ready to pour out and whoever happens to be nearby. And you may be that person coming in, like I am dry. Can somebody just give me a drop of something? Um, ultimately, of course we go to him. That's, he's the one who truly satisfies us, but I do believe he puts us in community for all of this. So yeah. So praying, um, Ephesians 3, 20 through 21 over us to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or imagine according to the power at work within us to him, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'll be excited to see, yeah, what March holds for us and the plan, you know, we think we have plans and yet we hold them loosely and we'll see what God wants to do, but they're always better. Even if they're harder, even if they're longer, even if they're <laughs> look different than what we thought, they're always, always better. So thanks you guys for being here. I look forward to connecting over the next few weeks and seeing yeah, the fruit of what we've done tonight. So thanks.